It's a little different here. It involves uh, us in the story here on Local 5. So we'll take you back three weeks ago this July 1st following a Black Lives Matter protest at the Capitol. A 21 year old protester at the center here showing our uh, crew, including Eve Anderson, uh, that uh, police document. Now look just like a flyer, but it was being well, used for law enforcement to yeah, arrest people. Paper. And we used a few images of the document in our broadcast. And because of this, the young man with his hands on that document put in jail. It's 21 year old Vit Tran. He was formally charged with dissemination of intelligence data. That's a felony that carries a prison sentence of up to five years. Pretty serious stuff. Local 5's Eva Anderson, again, the reporter on that story. She explained what happened that day and where the charge stands now. Today, Vit Tran remains in the Polk County Jail. He was arrested after our broadcast, which in part showed video of his hands displaying a police document that police have been using to identify and arrest protesters, which looked a lot like a packet of pictures. Neither my photographer nor I noticed that there was a red handling notice at the top of that document. It read in part, the information contained in this communication is intelligence data and should not be re-disseminated without approval from the agency that originally disseminated the intelligence data. The charge made national headlines after the AP reported it's only the second time it's been used since 2010. As I sought to understand more about why the situation played out that way, I spoke with a number of experts in law enforcement, law, and journalism. And now I want to provide that context to you, our viewers, about the rarity of the charge and what I've learned about the controversy surrounding it. We're walking around with this sheet of paper. They had three sheets of paper like this. This was the start of my story, July 1st. The first 20 seconds of video showing the hands of Vit Tran holding a document another activist is now charged with taking from police. And here is my tweet about it. Both now listed in a criminal complaint and a felony charge against Vit Tran. Reading in part, defendant Tran had obtained without authorization a DMPD intelligence bulletin and provided this to the local media station who then broadcast the confidential information on the television and on the internet through news coverage. Confidential information, according to police, that we were not asked to take down, but that left Tran with a rare leak charge that put him back in jail. In 46 years of being a journalist, I've never heard of somebody being prosecuted for sharing a pamphlet that they themselves did not steal with a reporter. Al Tompkins is senior faculty at the Pointer Institute, an international journalism research and education institute. From his outside perspective, Tompkins says he feels the charge may be a move by police to prevent activists from talking to reporters. I don't know if that's the police intent or not, but it's, it's the potential outcome of this to say, don't talk with the media. And if you do, we might even just use that as a way to prosecute you, to put you in a jail in the middle of a pandemic, by the way. But the Des Moines police say the charge is appropriate. In an email, they emphasized the handling notice that was at the top, saying, quote, anything contained in the document is sensitive and protected by law. They were arresting people from it. Attorney Sally Frank was a legal observer at the protest July 1st. She says she saw law enforcement holding the bulletins. Many state capitol police were walking around with what looked like about four pages of pictures. They were pictures of suspects police were seeking following a previous protest at High V, where a police car was vandalized. The protesters have committed to nonviolence. Frank doesn't believe the pictures actually constitute intelligence data, which is defined in Iowa law as information on identifiable individuals compiled in an effort to anticipate, prevent, or monitor possible criminal activity. This does not seem to be that because they were arresting people from it. So it wasn't to monitor or prevent, it was to apprehend and find. But the Iowa Department of Public Safety says it's important to not jump to conclusions. That information is essential to law enforcement and it's also essential that we protect that information. Patrick Waymeyer is an assistant director of intelligence at Iowa DPS. He wasn't able to directly comment on trans charge, but he says while some intelligence data is shared with media to help find suspects, other intelligence needs to stay confidential. That's up to the law enforcement uh, to decide 
uh, and it, that's up to our investigative agencies that are involved before that information is released to the news media. Frank believes the real issue is that law enforcement wasn't careful with the information. She adds the dissemination charge is written to primarily address officers who mishandle such information. So there's a question about whether it even applies to a member of the public who just happens to have a copy of it. But retired detective and police commander Patrick Fitzgibbon says that's not a question at all. The fact is, is that Mr. Tran obtained this information, which he shouldn't have had in the first place. He disseminated it on the news, and that's where the charge came from. Fitzgibbons teaches criminal justice in Colorado. Looking at Tran's charge as an outsider, but carrying more than two decades of investigations worth of insight. He says whatever is in those bulletins just shouldn't be shared by anyone, be it an officer or a civilian. Do you think it's possible that police could use a charge like this for intimidation or to send a message? Well, I don't know about its intimidation, but I definitely think we live in unprecedented times here. But when people are out there damaging property, assaulting people, I, I believe, and I'm not speaking for any law enforcement agency, yes, I think in this case, uh, we need to send a message in law enforcement that we're not going to tolerate this anymore. My concern is whether or not arresting someone for sharing a pamphlet with a reporter is enough to put them in jail on that charge. Trans friends continue to rally around the young man they believe to be a political prisoner caught in the crossfire of the clash between protesters and Des Moines police. I reached out to Polk County Attorney John Sarcone, who declined to comment on the charges, saying he didn't want to compromise the integrity of the trial. I haven't been able to reach Trans Attorney after repeated attempts. Now, trans friend Tristan started a GoFundMe to pay for his legal fees. And as of 10 last night, it had raised more than $22,100. Reporting from the newsroom, Eva Anderson, Local 5 News, we are Iowa. Wow. All right. Thank you, Eva. Last night, prosecutors and trans attorneys did agree to meet Thursday to determine if trans bonds should be lowered.